The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hi, and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. Today we're going to talk about capacitors. Capacitors are passive components that store potential energy in an electric field. They can be thought of kind of like batteries, except they don't generate electricity like batteries. Instead, they can gather and store a charge that can later be discharged to supply power to the circuit. Capacitors have two terminals. Inside, there are two conductive metal plates separated by an insulating layer called a dielectric. The dielectric can be made of glass, ceramic, plastic film, paper, mica, or an oxidizing metal. Let's look at the behavior of the plates and the dielectric to understand how a capacitor works. We have to remember that like charges repel each other, while unlike charges attract each other. When a voltage is applied across the capacitor, the negative charge of the power supply forces electrons into the first plate, while the positive charge of the power supply draws electrons out of the second plate. The first plate gains a negative charge, while the second plate gains a positive charge. The insulating dielectric between the metal plates prevents the charges from discharging across the layers within the capacitor, but the charges of the two plates still act upon each other. So electrons are pulled out of the second plate by the positive charge at the terminal, while also being repelled by the negative charge of the other plate. At the same rate, the first plate gains electrons driven in by the negative charge at the terminal, as well as being attracted in by the positive charge of the other plate. The charges will continue building until they reach the component's max capacity. The capacitor will maintain this charge until it is provided a discharge path. When a capacitor is first connected to a power supply, the positive supply terminal charges the positive plate on the capacitor, while the negative plate gets charged by the negative terminal. The capacitor's voltage will eventually equal that of its power supply. If a charged capacitor is disconnected from the power supply, the charge will remain at the plates. The capacitor will store the energy until there is a discharge path. When the capacitor terminals have a path to each other, not through the power supply, the charges attract and the capacitor discharges. A capacitor can be discharged by simply placing anything conductive across its two leads. Capacitors can be either polarized or non-polarized. Polarized capacitors are like diodes. They have a positive and negative lead and only work in one direction. The negative terminal can be identified by the stripe on one side. Polarized capacitors are electrolytic and made of aluminum, tantalum, or niobium. SMDs are often made using polymers. Non-polarized capacitors are like resistors in that they can be placed in a circuit in either orientation. Non-polarized capacitors include ceramic disc, monolithic ceramic, silver mica, mylar, and film capacitors. As you can see by the varying shapes of these capacitors, their conductive metal plates can be square, circular, rectangular, or even cylindrical or spherical. Size of construction will depend on the capacitor's application and voltage rating. Capacitance is determined by multiple factors. To hold a charge, a capacitor requires its plates to overlap. The more overlapping area, the more charge it can hold. The shared surface area between the plates is directly proportional to capacitance. The bigger they are, the more surface area they have, the more room the plates have to hold electrons, and thus the more capacitance they have. Capacitance is also affected by the distance between the plates. The closer together the plates, the higher their capacitance. The farther apart they are, the lower their capacitance. Capacitance also relies on the properties of the materials that makes up the dielectric layer. This chart shows the dielectric constants of multiple materials used as dielectrics in capacitors. Similarly to resistors, combining capacitors in a circuit can increase or decrease their overall capacitance. We know that capacitance decreases with the distance between the plates. When putting capacitors in series, it's like sandwiching all the layers together and the outermost positive and negative layers effectively become the sides of one new large capacitor. It's like having one capacitor with one large insulative layer in the middle, so the capacitance is drastically reduced and is often less than the lowest value capacitor. When put in parallel, their capacitance is additive. With all of the positive plates on one side and all the negative plates on the other, capacitors in parallel act like one giant capacitor, but with all of the areas of their plates added together. 
Capacitance increases with the area of its plates, so the capacitance becomes the total capacitance of all the capacitors combined. Capacitors are named for their capacity, or how much charge they can hold. Capacitance is measured in farads, marked with a capital F. Farads of a capacitor can be thought of kind of like amp hours of a battery. While they provide a set maximum voltage, their rating determines how long it can sustain providing that voltage. One farad is a very large unit of measurement. Capacitance ratings are often much smaller, typically measured in millionths of a farad, microfarads, or trillionths of a farad, picofarads. Capacitors in the millifarads range are commonly rated in thousands of microfarads. Capacitors in the nanofarads range are commonly rated in thousands of picofarads. The ratings written on a capacitor can be straightforward, like on this barrel-style electrolytic capacitor with clearly marked capacitance and voltage rating. Or they may require a little more deciphering. If not otherwise marked, then the number is measured in picofarads, being sure to factor in any multiplier. There may also be markings for voltage rating and tolerance. A lot of people think of capacitors like batteries, but batteries can supply a voltage for a much longer period of time, while capacitors can discharge its energy significantly faster than batteries. Can you think of a way that this would be useful in a circuit? Post your project ideas on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning!